Welcome back to the Smith's Euro YouTube channel. Today we are uh, back on the Mark 1 TDI swap and we're really close on this. We already got it to fire. We already got the cooling system figured out, shifters figured out, all the electrical stuff. Everything's figured out on the truck. There's a bunch of videos. Please go check out the other videos on this uh, build series. Like, comment, subscribe, and uh, share them. Sharing them will uh, get the channel growing a little better. Anyway, after that spiel. So what we're doing today is all the fun stuff, what I like to do, the fabrication. I am a little bit far further ahead um, on you guys. Sorry about that. But um, the reason I'm further ahead is because this stuff takes a lot of time, takes a lot of thought process, um, takes a lot of materials. I've, I've just been so busy that I haven't been able to pick up the camera. But I'll show you where I am right now. Uh, I think you guys will enjoy it. With these cars, the Mark III TDI, they come with these plastic boost pipes and they are they go to a side mount intercooler so they come out this way and down this way and uh, the side mounts down there on the intake side which is this pipe right here it has the vacuum nipple that goes to the map sensor and it also has an intake air temperature sensor i don't have that particular intake air temp sensor because this is uh, one of the older style where it's like uh, basically the one that would be up in the Mark III engine, uh, the cowl, uh, to tell you the temperature outside. That's uh, what that type is. Um, what I'm going to be trying to do is see if I can just use a uh, 1.8T uh, flange. That makes the most sense because you can do it on an ABA and you can do it on a VR. So I don't see why you can't do it on here. I found this intercooler. I'll get the specs for you guys. But I have it right here. It's mounted pretty center far over because I have the rad right here and I have two little tabs that I've welded and then I just drilled through the core support right here so it's hidden I didn't want to bolt up top so we have two bolts coming through holding the intercooler in place and I'll just put some uh, stripping around here so it doesn't mess it up it's pretty damn solid I did buy a two inch intercooler kit off Amazon so all the intercooler piping is two inch. It comes with a couple rubber couplers, a bunch of clamps, that kind of stuff. I'll link it in the description. Uh, it seems to be working well and it seems to be uh, able to work for this entire setup. Now the OEM turbo outlet is really small. It's like an inch and a half or inch and a quarter, but it comes up here and then it has this reducer built in that goes up to two inch. The intake manifold is two inch. So that's why I got the two inch piping. Now, here's what I'm doing. Um, it's up to you guys how you want to do things. So since I have this Mark 1 rad hose right there, I have already put a hose or this pipe crossed here and shut the hood and I seem to have enough clearance. So this pipe coming out of the turbo is going to be up like this. Um, these two pipes right here were one of the, it came with um, a big U. I cut both U's in half. And the first U is right here, second U is right here. I'm gonna have to bead roll everything. But um, these silicone couplers are just here to hold this stuff because you guys know I don't like having a lot of silicone couplers. I think it kind of clutters everything up because then you'll have silicone couplers plus two more clamps. Uh, it's just a lot of clutter in the bay. What I'm gonna be doing is just uh, welding these together once I get my fitment. But anyway, so this pipe is gonna come up and over and it's gonna go over this rad hose. See, and this was gonna come over and it's gonna come down to the intercooler and then the inlet to the intake manifold. So this is gonna have all the nice cold air. This one's coming out. Again, this part's gonna be welded. I'm gonna have the 1AT intake flange somewhere in here, boost nipple somewhere in here so I can then run it up to the ECU. So this is coming and it actually goes underneath of the radiator hose and it goes right over the alternator. You can see guys, I've had to make my own end tanks. So this end tank here used to have a, a, a pipe coming out. This was like a oh, in and then out. So I cut this off and welded it shut. And then over here, I've been making my own intercooler end tank. It's big, it's ugly. Uh, you gotta make do with uh, what you can use. So this now is going to 
it right on there. Obviously, it's not really mocked up that well. So it's going to sit on here. And this upper hose is going to be the boost outlet. So this is going to be the cold side coming out. You can see it goes right to the silicone coupler. And then uh, I have to make something. Uh, it's going to come around here and come out of the side more than likely. Um, I just got to gotta get that figured out for now. This is basically how you make a same side intercooler. So what will happen is in here you see it's pretty big. Basically I'm going to cut this right down the middle and I'm going to weld a plate to one side and then so there will be two separate pieces and then the plate is actually also going to be welded to the intercooler. So with making these intercoolers the fins are where the air goes through. This, al this aluminum uh, bar right here, that is what you weld to. So the plate is probably gonna be about right here in the middle and this plate will be welded all the way across and up and then it'll be one separate chamber. So the air will come in and it'll go through this and it'll go all the way down and it'll come around and come all the way back this way out the other side, vice versa. Since I have this already uh, welded on, welded all together, I'm gonna go ahead and drill this hole and then I'm going to get the other pipe mocked up where I need it because I wanna weld both of these on to where I'll have you know both inlet and outlet in line and I'll be able to drill the holes out in here, clean all the debris out then I'll find a good spot to cut it, and I'll cut it in half, find a plate, weld it in. It's, it's a decent amount of work, but uh, you guys will be able to see it as it comes along. I'll show you what I got here. Here's the end tank. I'm going to cut the holes afterwards. At first, I made sure the fit up was good, so I had to grind a little bit on the edges. That way it fits nice and snug down in there. I'm going to take my propane torch. I'm going to take this off. I'm going to heat this area up, and then I'll throw this back on. And then some of the settings I'm going to use. Uh, I will have my amps at 130 and I'm on AC obviously. I have a number seven gas lens and I have about 15 CFH of argon. So I have my frequency turned down to I think it's 70. That worked fine for me on the first one. Uh, I'll throw you guys on time lapse. We'll weld through this, let it cool down. Drill the holes, get it on. You know, it's a it's a big process, but yeah. So we got both end tanks cut, grinded, cleaned up the sides. So now all I gotta do, I gotta go grab the intercooler, bring it over, and um, I can do everything on the bench now because I know everything fits. Could cut some off of it, but it's too late to do that now. So if I take this end tank off. I can just leave this right in place, get a piece of aluminum, weld it in there, make this a nice box, completely weld it. And then after that's completely welded, weld this to that, air will come in. It won't be able to come out, so it'll come down, come back around, all the way up and out. Now all I have to do is I'll tack it in a couple spots uh, where it needs to be and then I'll take it off and then I'll fully weld it around to the uh, this piece and then I'll put it back on the intercooler Go!
Got the intercooler totally done. It was a pain to weld because this is actually used. I probably told you guys that, but it's used. So along the core, it just kept bringing out uh, dirt, oil, grease, whatever. So it was hard to weld, but I just pressure tested it. I did get a few nice welds on it. And down that way, up this way, around there. But yeah, it's not a uh, it's not a showpiece by any means. You can see it's bashed up already. It's just I knew if I bought an intercooler, I was gonna have to do this anyway. So um, we have this. It works. Uh, we're ready to put this in, and then we'll get to the intercooler piping. Here's how the uh, intercooler looks with the rad. You see, we have plenty of space. Uh, the rad is pretty secure just from the hoses. This pipe. I've already put a bead roll on it and you can see I got the intercooler pipe pretty pretty good right there. So this one now I'm going to mark it and then we'll take it off and weld it. But you can see it fits pretty good. comes around here, silicone boot to the intercooler itself. So we're going to do this line first. I do have to put a bead roll on the end of this first, but I'm going to mark it, bead roll it, and then take it over and weld it. So when I weld like intercooler piping, I always use the big uh, filler wire. This is 330 seconds. Uh, that way you don't have to feed so much because if you had a small rod, you'd be feeding and feeding and feeding. This one, you can just kind of roll around with it. Makes it a lot easier. I'm at 100 amps uh, and I put the frequency up to 90. And you can see I've already uh, feed rolled everything and the welds came out decent. The white stuff on the outside, that's just a cleaning action. Uh, we'll let this cool down and then we gotta put it in. We have to put a bung in there for, that was hot. We have to put a bung in there for boost reference for the map sensor. And we also gotta put in the bung for the intake air temp sensor. So uh, we'll get to that in a second. I did weld in the 1AT intake air temp sensor flange. Uh, this one was really hard to weld because it was like a flat piece. It wasn't curved, wasn't beveled, and you couldn't do anything about it. So I just had to fill it, but that's all done. This will be the intake manifold. That'll be the intercooler. So this will be hidden underneath so nobody will ever see it. It'll be nice and clean. Good job. All right, so all the intercooler side is done. Everything's 100% custom. This was this intercooler was in a scrap pile. After seeing options that are out there for buying this type of setup, where you would have a rad and an intercooler, usually they sell them as one. This thing's like nine, 900 bucks. Like it's it's a decent amount of money. The final clip of this video should just be. Everything sort of put back together. We're going to put the grill back in, see how the intercooler looks. Uh, I do one of them stupid snaps, but I'm, that's not me. Yeah, I'll just, uh, maybe I'll just time lapse it, throw everything together, and then show you guys the, the final completed uh, setup on this car. It's a lot of work. Hopefully you guys liked it.
So now officially everything is uh, installed. We've got the grill. You can barely see the intercooler, so I'm kind of happy with that. So I think we made the right decision by not painting the intercooler. Uh, the piping, I remember I still have to add that one port, but as of right now, it's basically done. So I think it fits really, really well. Fan wiring's all in, coolant's all done. And then now what I'm gonna start on, which will be the next video for you guys, is I'm either gonna make a down pipe or I'm gonna make an up pipe. We'll see. Next video, you guys will find out what it'll be. I really want a flapper out the hood. So I got one. Uh, when we do the bigger turbo on this, we'll go back to the uh, side exit exhaust. But yeah, guys, uh, appreciate you guys for watching. Give me a like, comment, subscribe, share some videos if you can. Again, we're trying to we're trying to get the channel to grow, and I mean that's that's the only way it'll it'll grow. So yeah, thanks again for uh, spending time with me, guys. Catch you in the next one.